Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. I am going to share with you today my living room makeover. This is a look at what it looked like before. I've had this same style for several years and we recently did some updates. So I'm going to go through those with you in this video and I, it was done over several weeks. So it's going to be kind of you know different days different outfits that kind of thing and we didn't do it all at once so i'll just take you through step by step in the order that we went so here my husband and his brother were just moving our old sectional out we did move this down to our basement and then we purchased a new set of furniture a new couch and love seat and so i'll show you the new furniture in a second but this day we were just moving it out. You can kind of get an idea of what the room looks like with the rug and the wall color and the furniture. And so we kind of wanted to replace all of it. So we bought this rug. It was just a simple inexpensive rug I got at Ollie's. It was around $89. And I think that it's a seven by 10 if I remember correctly. It's not something I can link down below, but if there is anything I'm able to, I will link them all down in the description box. So if you're looking for something in specific, go check that description box and see if it's there. Cause if I'm able to, I will link it down below. So this was just kind of like a grayish tan color. I wanted something simple. As you can see, we have dogs. We also have cats. We have a lot of traffic through this area. It's right by our front door and we have a small house. So everyone has to come in the door right over this carpet. So I'd like to replace it every year to two years. So I don't like to spend a lot on the carpet. And then I found these um, little side tables on pinterest and i also found them on amazon so i'll link them down below the ones from amazon and i just thought that they were so cute and so farmhouse and i asked my husband if he could make them and he did and he made them a beautiful set of these for me they are around 89 to 100 dollars online and we spent a total of 45 dollars making two of them so it was a lot cheaper of course there was a lot more work but there you know there is some pride in knowing that you made these yourself and he actually made them to my specifications he made them a little wider and they turned out so beautiful if you follow me uh, and you've then you've already seen these tables you've seen uh, how they all turned out but I wanted to go ahead and put everything together from start to finish in this one video for those of you who haven't seen those videos so some of this is redundant but hopefully you will understand why I did that so this is a little like drawing that he made of the tables and then he basically just you know did it he didn't use any plans or anything he just did it based on what he saw and we, we figured out our own measurements and got the wood and it they turned out so pretty like i think prettier than if we had bought them and what i really liked was that i could do my own finish on them too So I decided to just paint the base of the tables white. So I just used this basic white paint from Lowe's. It's the Valspar brand. It's just nothing spe special about it, just basic white paint. And I painted the legs white and it was very tedious, time consuming, but it was so worth it in the end. You'll see they turned out beautifully. I did not fill the little holes in them, the little screw holes. I thought that they made it look rustic. The ones that you find online are actually made from actual salvaged barn wood. So I wanted that kind of rustic look. So I just left them raw like that. I decided to stain the top of them I wasn't sure if I was gonna paint them or stain them but this is the Minwax 
stain that I used and I just used old rags and a plastic glove and I stained the tops of them. It takes about two hours to dry when you stain when you use this stain and I stained them really good and then I came back oh, well I, actually the first time I did them and then I just immediately did a second coating just to make them a little bit darker and then you'll see in a minute I came back and did s uh, several coats of polycrylic on the top and they've held out, up really great I wanted to make sure that the tops you know were okay for like people putting their drinks on them and scratches and things like that but polycrylic does a really good job of protecting it so they turned out so beautiful So I wanted to kind of get that weathered look from the wood. I didn't want just the stark white. So I just kind of dry brushed some just basic acrylic paint. This was, I think, the color Melted Chocolate. And it kind of went with the stain that I chose. And I just dry brushed it over the edges and a little bit in the center of the wood and just gave it that kind of rustic barn, barn wood look. So this is the polycrylic I like to use. This is the Minwax and I did use this satin finish because I wanted it to be a little bit shiny on the top and they do have a matte finish as well but I chose this shiny finish for this and I ended up putting I believe four coats on it. I just let them dry about a half hour in between and came back and I was actually going to do a fifth but I realized that when I came back to do it that I didn't need to. It was kind of overkill. It looked great the way that it was. So. This is uh, what they look like with the polycrylic on them. I'll show you when they're completely finished when I bring them upstairs. So just <laughs> FYI, I have like cats and dogs surrounding me as I'm doing this voiceover. So you may hear them or they're tapping toenails or they're meowing and <laughs> just FYI and also kids and, you know, life going on. But these are the lamps that I got. I will link them down below and I also do have a 10% discount if you would like to purchase these. Make sure you use the link. They're beautiful farmhouse style lamps and they have this like cage design which is so beautiful. They have two USB ports and an actual plug on the base of them. They have like a lower light for you if you want to use like, you know, like a low night light kind of look or if you want to have them really bright you can use the top and the bottom but they're a beautiful set came from Amazon so make sure to check those out if you're interested in them so now I'm just going to move out my old end table it's really small I only had one end table and one lamp before so now I'm really loving the look of having the two tables and the two lamps so I'm just gonna set them up and show you what they look like So this is what they look like in the evening with just the top light on. I think they're beautiful. I love them. The tables turned out amazing. So you can see here that we have our new couch, but we're still waiting on a new love seat. But that is coming actually the day that you're seeing this video is the day that our love seat is being delivered. So that will be coming in another video, but I'm excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> so these are some wood like pieces of wood that we had screwed to the wall a couple years ago. I really like the look of it, but it made it really difficult to hang pictures. I couldn't, you know, you can understand, I couldn't like hang bigger pictures in, I, I had to put the nails either on those pieces of wood or had to be a really long nail to go in between them. And it just wasn't working anymore. And so I asked my husband if he could take them off. And so he just used like a razor knife and cut because we did paint them. We didn't put caulk on them, thankfully, otherwise it would have been a lot more difficult but he just pulled them off and then he used some, and there's my dog barking, <laughs> like I said. 
he he did kind of tear up the drywall but you know it I knew it was going to be that way so he just puttied it really good and then we sanded it and it made a terrible mess all over the house but it was necessary it came out beautiful these walls are smooth and beautiful but I just wanted to show you what they look like after he pulled them off So next, I had a really cool idea. I thought that um, I, we have really old windows and we need to replace them and that is in the future. But I, these, I don't know, basic window frames that are on the walls, I thought it'd be really pretty if I took those off and just replaced them with some stained window frames. I have a, a stained window frame in my kitchen. When we redid our kitchen, we got them to just put some raw wood up there and I stained it and it is so beautiful and it's very farmhouse. And so I thought that would be really pretty in the living room because we have couches that go up against our windows and I don't want to put long curtains. I just don't like the look of them being smushed behind the couch. I don't really want to put valances up at the top and I couldn't figure out what to actually put in there to kind of warm up the space and I've kind of gone back and forth but I just thought if I trimmed them out with some raw, some stained wood I thought that that would be really beautiful and what I'm kind of finding out is that I like more of a coastal farmhouse look and instead of just like rustic farmhouse I'm always drawn to like blues and greens so and the the light wood tone I, or it's kind of a medium wood tone it kind of goes along with that and so I hope that you understand what I'm saying but I I don't know through this process I've learned that I kind of like coastal farmhouse more than just regular farmhouse because um, I kind of like more color but anyway <laughs> these are when he was taking them off they were kind of a pain but not too bad the outer walls in our house are cinder blocks so it's always tougher to get things off and then putting new pieces on the outer walls is hard so you can see that like the ledge at the bottom that was literally like in the wall and so he couldn't remove that without like really removing the whole window so we did have to keep that there but you'll see when we put the wood up it's not too distracting I don't think it looks too bad but this is what everything looks like after we got the putty up and the window frames taken down and you can see it goes into my dining room but my dining room window we didn't do that too because it has curtains over it and I kind of wanted it to look separate so we just did the two windows in the living room and this is a look at my like TV wall I've had it this way for years and it's it's really pretty but I wanted a change so we did decide to build um, I'll show you what we decided to build but it definitely makes it look more kind of coastal farmhouse and I think it's beautiful but this is just a look at everything before we get started painting and moving moving things out this is the light that we've had for years and we don't even use the fans so it's time to replace that so now I'm gonna go ahead and just like take all the decor down because my husband was gonna use this shelf down in his man cave I do love the look of this wall I actually painted it to look like barnwood a long time ago and I've loved it for a couple years but I kind of wanted some more storage and I also have this little fireplace which I didn't want to get rid of and so I'll show you in a minute what I ended up doing in this space and I think it turned out really pretty So I'm going to take that same white paint again and I'm just going to paint the trim around the windows as you can see it's like peeling it's old it's just these windows are so old I think they're original to the house which is over 80 years old or around 80 years old so 
Um, obviously, like I said, we will be replacing them eventually, but for now, I just wanted to touch up the paint. And I do have to do this every couple of years because it just comes, you know, it just flakes off. And we have dogs that like to get up here and, you know, bump the windows and scratch them and all that. So it did like brighten them up and made them look clean. And I, I figured with the wood trim around them that the white needed to be touched up. So that's what I'm doing now, just touching up the windows. And then I also went around the bottom and the top molding around the wall and painted that in this white color as well and I wasn't like too careful because when I came back in with the paint I knew that I could be um, you know cover up any of the white that got on the wall so if you see me being a little bit messy it's because I knew that I could cover that up with the paint. So you'll notice here that we have this gap where the floor is because we originally had carpet in here when we first moved in this house and then we replaced the flooring and we need to put the little like quarter round at the bottom so that's going to be another time we'll, my husband will come in and put that. We didn't do that for this um, in this video but that will be something that we need to do obviously because you can see that huge gap and it's been there for so long and I definitely want him to fix that. So on this wall where the TV was, I am not going to be painting it the same color as the walls because you're going to see how it all comes together. But I needed for this lower portion of it to just be white. So I painted, ultimately I painted three coats of white to cover up that faux barnwood look. But um, after three coats, it was totally fine. And also you can see where like the, the, brackets were that were holding the shelf and all of that I didn't putty that or anything because of what I was doing the technique I was using it didn't need the wall to be just like perfectly smooth so you'll see in a minute that I painted the bottom half white and then the top half is going to be the wall the new wall color but this is just Marion sanding this down and I didn't get but a few clips but this took a long time and it made a huge mess <laughs> it was no fun if you've ever done taping and mudding and sanding you know what I'm talking about there was dust on everything but thankfully that is over and done with we cleaned it up we got the walls prepped and ready to be painted So this was another day and you can see uh, you can still see the the paint through the white so this was the second coat and I ultimately like I said did do three coats of the white and it totally covered it up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is the paint that I chose for the walls. This is just a Valspar. I chose the color Sherwin-Williams Sea Salt, and if you've been watching me, you know that I agonized over this color. It's a very coastal color. I think that this, this, is, what, this is what made me realize that I like the, the coastal farmhouse kind of style more, uh, more than just like black and white and brown. I like to add color. So I chose this color and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. I love, love, love it. But you may see as it goes on that it doesn't look a whole lot different. This is an edger, a paint edger that I bought at Walmart and it came in very handy to do the top and bottom edges. But I, um, if you could see the paint in color, you would see there is a big difference. Before it was a blue color, it was called crisp blue. And it was also a Sherwin-Williams color, but this is more of a green color, and it's a greenish gray. And I don't see many living rooms painted in this color, but I'm always drawn to what the greener colors. And so you can see it going on. It's actually darker when it's wet than when it dries, but you can see a slight difference. And overall, for us seeing it in person, it definitely looks different. And everything is so fresh and clean when you repaint. So there's nothing like that fresh clean, even if it's the same color, it just looks so much better. So I just used this edger and went along the top and the edges and you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I came back in with a roller and I only had to do one coat of this paint because the color before was so similar, so it kind of acted as like the first coat. I, I didn't have any areas where you could see color coming through or it was too thin. This coat, this paint is really good coverage. It's actually the, the cheaper Valspar paint, but it's a really good paint still. Um, in the last project I did, they gave me the more expensive, it was almost $50 a can, but it's so thick that I couldn't even get one entire room done with one can. And this one, I bought two cans because I thought I'm gonna make sure I have enough and I didn't even use one whole can to do all of this. So that means I have extra and I can do other areas in my house, maybe um, a few other rooms in this same paint color because it's my new favorite color, I love it. And I was just showing you how you can see that it is slightly different but it is also similar, but it's definitely a green compared to the blue that I had before. So after I got all the edges done, then it was time to roll it, which to me, this is the fun part because, you know, this is when you can actually see what it's gonna look like up on the wall. And I always put some, some kind of cardboard or something at the bottom because you do have the little drops of paint that fly off the roller when you're rolling, but um, this protected the floor and I didn't have any messes. So here it is finished. Like I said, I only had to do one coat and it looks amazing. It's still wet here, so it's a little shiny and it's also a little darker than it is when it dries. You can see my front door. It is kind of like the same color family, but it's darker. And eventually I do plan to paint my door. So, but for this, in this video, it's not painted. So for now, it's just gonna remain that color. But you can see that this is a beautiful greenish gray color and it depends on the time of day you know, how it looks, if it looks gray or green or b even blue sometimes, it's so beautiful. So I wanted to show you the uh, little kind of TV stand area that we made. This is a brand, I guess it's called South Shore. I'm gonna link these down below. What these are is they're bookshelves, but they're smaller than your average bookshelves. I was trying to figure out a way to keep the, the TV stand that we have because it does have a fireplace in it and we you do use that in the winter. 
but I also wanted to paint it white and I wanted to get something to go alongside it that would kind of make it look like a built-in or like a big entertainment center but I wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to fit in our space. There's a lot of things I needed it to be. And so I looked at a lot of different things and these are the ones that I chose. And I'll give you a close up look in a minute of what they look like, but we were just setting them there to see how everything was gonna fit. And I'm gonna be doing this faux brick behind it. So I wanted to see where you know the lines would be for that. So if you watched my porch makeover video, I did this on my porch and I loved it. I did it around the window frames on the outside of my house. And you just take a sponge and some craft paint and you just put them on the wall, <laughs> push them on the wall. It's actually really, really simple. What I should have done is started from the top and made a straight line and gone from there because in the end, the top layer of bricks is a little bit, little bit slanted. But when it was all said and done, I really like the way they look, but I'm not for sure if I'm gonna keep it. I'm going back and forth whether I wanna keep them or I wanna maybe put like some wallboard behind it that looks like wood. There's several different options, but for now, this is what I did. And I eventually started to wear, if you do, if you do decide to do this, if you have a glove and you touch the wall with the glove, it's gonna get paint in places you don't want to. So I just kinda of like punched it, punched the sponge after I got it you know, set where, I, set where I wanted it. It's a super, super simple technique. And as you can see, they look like real bricks. So I did go back in in a little bit and whitewash them just to make them a little less, I don't know, a little softer. And I have asked people what they think and they like them. They think I should keep them. And it does kind of go with that like coastal farmhouse look. But like I said, I'm not positive I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna let it grow on me for a little while before I decide. So I took my entertainment center outside and I, I got some of this linen white chalk paint and I like scraped off as much of the paint as I could because this thing is not intended to be painted. This material is n does not take paint good at all, but I really wanted to reuse this and not have to replace it. So I thought, well, if I buy chalk paint, you know, it goes on every surface. You don't have to prime it and all this. So obviously you can see this was not the greatest idea. So I started out with three cans of this and I thought, well, I'll try and you know just do a few layers it'll be fine but it wasn't it just did not look good so you can see I went over it I, I started to do the inside I thought I could just like spray the inside areas and it wouldn't be a big deal it would be easier than actually painting but I was very wrong <laughs> and so I ended up scrapping that idea but I thought at least the paint could kind of like act as a primer on it so you can see that it just literally ran down the sides it was not working in any way so I went inside and I found this, it's actually exterior paint, but it's a good paint. And I thought, well, I'll just use the, it might be exterior, but it, maybe that just means it will hold up a little bit better. I'm not sure. But I went ahead and just thought, I'm just gonna have to roll, roll it on and paint it on. And it, it's gonna be a pain. And it was a huge pain. <laughs> this was such a pain. But in the end, I'm so glad I did it. And I didn't get rid of this and I was able to reuse it. And it looks so good. And it's probably, you know, this material is not meant to be painted. So I, I do have to be careful with it, but it's not gonna be moved around and things aren't gonna be set on it and scratched and everything. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend painting this, you know, material or whatever. I, this is just an old like fireplace we got from Lowe's a couple years ago. So I can't link it or anything, but it came in dark brown. I wish I had a white one, but I did what I could with what I had. And I actually really like the way that it looks. So now I just took that same paint that I uh, painted 
the uh, TV stand with and just came inside and thought, you know what, I'm going to whitewash these bricks. So, because I noticed that they were a little bit slanted at the top, so I thought if I kind of, kind of could manipulate it with the paint. They don't really look slanted right here and you can see that like on the right side I made it go up on top of the brick further than the other side to try and make them look like they were more even and it did kind of work it's just kind of an illusion but I do like them I just got to see if I want to keep them long term so now I Marion put these bookshelves together for me and then he had to cut out a space for the alarm system and then also the plug at the bottom but you can see they're all st freestanding pieces so if we ever need to move them it's not a big deal nothing is like screwed together or anything so that's what I wanted something that I could move around easily and then we just took a we bought a piece of wood and wood is so stinking expensive this piece this one piece of wood at the top was like $27 just for a piece of wood and we got an eight foot piece and we did have to cut like a foot off of it, but it was a little bit warped on one side. So we were trying to figure out like what's the best way to lay it to make it flat. And Marion talked about putting like a trim across the entire front of this to kind of make it cohesive. But I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted that. So I said, I want to wait. I might change that up too. I'm not sure. So I wanted to show you that a few of these pieces were, you can see where they like put the paper on the shelves and it got a little wrinkled, but I just flipped those to the underside so it wasn't a big deal, but I did want to show that in case anyone wants to purchase these, you might have the same experience. So I just put the little caps on them and they were, there's, I think it came, each unit came with five shelves. These were definitely, um, I looked at so many different things because I didn't want like a, wide bookshelf and I didn't want something as narrow as like a cube organizer which I looked at some of those so these were like the perfect compromise they're kind of like narrow bookshelves and they're actually really sturdy and they were a little bit pricey but I looked and looked and looked and this was the only thing I could find that was exactly what I wanted and I wanted them to be sturdy you know and to be nice and I also liked that they had the little trim at the top so all overall I'm very happy with them and they'll be linked down in the description box if you're interested in them they were, I think, around $85 a piece, so not too bad um, for, you know, for the quality of what you're getting. I really like the way they look, and then putting the wood on top just kind of brought it all together, and I was able to reuse, you know, my fireplace, which we really do use it and enjoy it, and it looks so much better painted white, even as it was such a pain, but it was so worth it. So now I'm just going to wipe everything down and then in a little while I'll show you some of the decor that I decided to put up here. But these are going to be really fun to decorate for holidays and different things. I'm excited to do that. So this is the wood that we're going to actually, it's the same stain. This is the early American 230 in case you're wondering. But it, um, it's the same stain that I also stained the tables with. But this is the trim for the windows. One of the pieces, this first piece, is actually for a shelf that we're going to be putting up on the wall. I'll tell you about that in a little while. But um, I started out using a glove on one hand and it was just not working. You'll see I ended up putting a double glove on that hand and then getting another glove for my other hand. But you'll see that it's just basically staining all this wood so that we can put them up uh, around the windows.
So that stain takes about two hours to dry and now they're ready to be put up on the window and I just wanted to show you what it looked like underneath the wood. It was pretty beat up. We have, like I said, the cinder block walls and so these outer walls are just underneath the drywall it, they're just a mess <laughs> so the this covered it up nicely though Marion just used a nail gun and it was super simple this is such an easy and inexpensive way to dress up a window I just think it's beautiful if you don't want to have a curtain on it I love how it turned out um, you can see the windowsill is still there but he just put the wood underneath it and it lined up pretty well and I actually really like the way that it looks So now we're moving on to the light and I did vlog this day so there was there's a vlog coming up where you'll see this was an absolute nightmare and it wasn't because of the light that we purchased it was just the wiring it literally took him two days to get this light figured out and it's actually not as bright as our ceiling fan light was it's still four light bulbs but I had to use like 40 watt instead of 60 watts so it's not as bright but I wanted something that would be up higher so that we don't bump our heads on it and we didn't use the fan so it was pointless to have that anymore so I'll link this light down below if it's something you're interested in but it is a really pretty light and very much the style I like So um, if you if you follow me, you know that two of my kids got married within like six months of each other. And so we have these two beautiful family pictures that are my absolute favorite. And they've been hanging in the corner of my wall. And since I had those like wooden strips on the wall, I couldn't hang these next to each other. But now that I don't have them anymore, I am able to hang them next to each other. And I kind of wanted these to be like a focal point in my living room. So I went and bought a second frame that matched the bigger frame that I had and then I had to trim the picture down just a little bit both of these pictures now are the same size and they're in the same frames and I didn't I actually bought a poster board to use as a mat for this but I cut it wrong and so I just used the paper insert from the picture I just flipped it over and I just taped the picture to that and these pictures I have all these on uh, you know digital copies so I can reprint if anything ever got damaged so that's not a big deal but I put it in the same frame so now I have both pictures matching and they are so beautiful and I just want to quickly show you this technique to hang pictures to get them even you just take painters tape and you line it up along your brackets or whatever you're going to use to hang the pictures up with and then you take a tack or something and you poke it um, poke a little hole right where you're going to be hanging it and then you take that strip of tape and put it on your wall and then you know exactly where to put your little nail holes and it works every time perfectly for me so I just um, used a little thumbtack and then I made the little holes and I put them on the wall but I wasn't exactly sure where they were going to be so I kind of moved them around this took me quite a while to get them to see what they were how they were centered and then I had to make sure they were level and I kept moving them over but it's so nice because you you can know exactly where they're going to hang before you put your nails in your wall so it didn't take too long and when I did it I did it in one one time and it was perfectly lined up so definitely use this technique if you have pictures to hang and you're stressed about you know getting them even and everything it was super super easy So there they are I love them I love them and I had a thought it'd be really cute to put like a little wreath in the middle in the middle of them so I put that up but you'll see in a minute that I did change it around and then I just hung this old screen I, I got this from the habitat restore store so for like one dollar years and years ago and I love to use it as kind of like a second frame around a framed picture so 
so I just hung this picture that used to be above our TV. It's one of my favorites, two of our whole family. And then I just went ahead and hung the other things back up on the wall that I had before, but I used the same tape technique to make sure that it's straight and level. I wanted to show you here the shelf that is going to go above these pictures. In this video, when I did the final reveal, this shelf was not hung. Marion wasn't able to hang it yet, but I will show you a glimpse at the end. He did get it up. And these are the little brackets I got. I got these at Walmart, super inexpensive. I'll link these down below if I can. And then I just went ahead and started hanging a few things up. I am still going to go back and hang some more things. I haven't I haven't put everything up. I don't have everything exactly the way that I want it, but it's a good start. And here I just decided to change these up. I got this little wall hanging at the Christian bookstore Mardell and put some greenery in it and then took the heart wreath and hung it over here on this little blue thing. This came from Hobby Lobby and I think it's so, so pretty. I love these blues, blues and greens. So now I'm going to decorate these shelves just, just for this video. Things did change around, but I was just curious to see like what was going to go in here and these baskets I stole from my shoe bench I'm going to get some new ones but I wanted to see what they look like and this is one of my favorite pieces Marion made this for me with an old palette and it's so pretty and rustic I love it and I was so excited to actually have a space where it fit perfectly to you know show it off and then you know if you know me you know I love to decorate with photos and so this was um, the perfect place to display all these favorite family photos this little square was to hide the um, alarm box right there so I wanted to put something a little bit higher but I just basically put photos and some greenery that was my main thing I wanted to display on this shelf but of course like at Christmas and Easter and all the holidays it's going to be super fun to decorate with and then I can also put like banners at the top and it's just going to be really fun to to decorate but this will change up all the time because I get bored and things need to change all the time. So a lot of you guys are the same way. So, you know, if you get bored easily. But anyway, this is a little plant I got from the at-home store, which I'm obsessed with. It's so cute. Um, if you remember at Christmas time, Marion ordered me some online. They're only like $10. I'll link it down below if, I, if I'm able to. But they're so realistic looking. little tables too I'm still trying to figure out what works because we got rid of our coffee table well we didn't get rid of it we put it in the basement I'm not sure if I'm ready to get rid of it yet but I might have Marion build me a matching coffee table or I might just not have one our new reclining sofas both have or our sofas both have recliners on them so I'm not sure if I want the coffee tables the coffee table or not if it might be too much but anyway I just showed you these little coasters I got these off of Amazon as well I'll link them down below they're so cute they look like little rugs and now for the pillows. I found these pillows at Home Goods a while back and they are super soft, like really plush. The outer, the outside isn't super soft, but they're really plush. And my dogs are obsessed with these pillows. Like literally, they, they sleep on them every day. They get down and sleep on the pillow, like their whole body on the pillow. <laughs> they love them. And then I bought these pillow covers off of Amazon, which I'll link. They're just a beautiful green color. And then I had to buy the inserts from Walmart. So these kind of were a little pricier than normal, but I just loved that green color. I couldn't pass them up. And then I also got a set of these gray and white, like gingham pillowcases. So right now it looks like way too many pillows, but when I get my love seat, you know, I'll spread them out among the two, the two couches and it won't be so many, but for now, kind of have a lot of pillows <laughs> but I love the gray and the green and the blue together so much and this is my shoe bench but this is going to get a makeover too in another video I need to paint it and get some new baskets and I'll figure out like the the pillows and stuff what I want to put on this and where I actually want to set this in the living room it won't stay here most likely but for now that's what it is so this is what it looks like at the end I think it is so beautiful I love the updates I know if you um, I don't know haven't followed me you might not see that it's, <laughs> it's too much different but in person this green color is just beautiful I would definitely encourage you to give it a shot if you're on the fence and you don't know it is so beautiful it's a perfect green gray 
combination and in my house in the lighting it's more green but in some lighting it's more blue and it's more gray but the window frames I just think are so beautiful and like such an inexpensive way to fix fix up an old window and I just love all the blues and greens together all the colors the soft cool color palette is so beautiful to me and then I love as you can tell greenery everywhere it's just everywhere in my house I just think it looks fresh and you know um, I don't know I just think it's beautiful and these tables Marion just did such a great job he's such a good um, carpenter <laughs> and like I said I might have him build me a coffee table we'll see with the two couches how it works we'll have to see what we need if it fits our needs or not and also um, the pictures on the wall I think the two wedding pictures are my favorite part of the makeover I just really wanted to have those together and that was kind of what spurred me on to do this to get rid of you know to take the wood off the wall and paint it and everything and I'll show you in a minute what it looks like with the new shelf but anyway I hope that you enjoy this video I hope that it gave you some ideas if you need some maybe it inspired you to do some things remember that paint is like the cheapest easiest way to change the entire look of a room like don't be afraid to paint if you don't like it just repaint it like I have painted these walls probably six or seven times in the 18 years we've lived here and I've never regretted it it always freshens up the space and it's so inexpensive so anyway make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you like these kind of videos I will have some more coming up I also have a whole playlist of home makeover videos so I will have that linked in the description box as well if you want to check out some of the other rooms that we have redone my dining room for one as you can see um, is connected to my living room but I did last year do a dining room makeover that was really fun we've done our kitchen we've basically done every room and we still have more rooms to do so make sure to subscribe if you're not already if you like those kind of videos and I'm going to leave you with a couple more shots of the decor and then at the very end I'm going to show you what it looks like with the little shelf above the pictures and like I said that's my favorite part so anyway I love you guys and I will see you in my next video bye bye